What's up? This is Copy Who, and I'm your host, Paul the Producer. Bienvenue! This is my fourth start because of certain technical issues. There was a software update and a few things changed. I backed up, or what I did was I took all my video recordings and put them on a disc off the computer so that I would free up the computer so that it would function better. And when I did that, I took out some stuff that was important and it didn't work right when I started up a show doing this. So, but I'm here now. It seems like everything is in order now for a good show. I hope I don't get any interruptions because today is interesting. It's like I am further more and more in my life down this path where people are relying on me more. That's the stage of life I'm in. I'm not a kid anymore and people are relying on me to double check certain things. And it's, it's not entirely easy, but I'm glad that I can do that. I'm grateful that I'm able to do that for people. They need me to do that. And, but it's been a big distraction tonight. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, but it's like a handful of things are like, deet, 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 and it's like, oh man, are you kidding me? For once on this recording right now, I think I have all things, all technical things figured out. And if anything goes wrong, I guess I got to own, own it. It's my fault. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let me just say hello to my birds. What's up, you two? You know, I was a little nervous a minute ago when she had started hitting the fan and it wasn't working the way it was supposed to, but I'm doing okay, right? Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get back to what I'm doing because people are probably getting sick of you as a bitch. Oh, hey, 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 I know, I know, I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing you. I gotta abuse you a little bit sometimes. It's your namesake. When people understand who you really are in the mix of this, the metaphor, the allegory, they're like, hey, those two aren't very nice. You got to pick on them, right? I do. I need to pick on you. Yes. Yes. I still respect you. And you're not the real people. You're just a metaphor for the real people, right? That's right. Okay. I have a few things planned tonight. I have an Instagram clip of Amala. I have... What else do I have? I have a then and now, but it's not a normal then and now. It's a video where some dude over a 15 year period took a picture of himself every single day and he made an animation of it so you could see the progression. And I'm not gonna watch it over five minutes. I'm gonna speed it up. And the last one is a clip from Eric and Daryl. I wanna comment on it because I was watching it earlier today. It's not crazy, it's not slapstick, it's just some deep talk. I'll contribute the way they make me feel when they're talking about all this stuff. And so we're gonna start out right now, but first what I wanna do is come over here for you guys to this. Hello. You see that? How that's changed down there? That's right. That's different. I was running that on a YouTube uh, video before. And so it was eating up my bandwidth. And if I want to go live eventually, I had to clear this up so that I could, so that I could have all the available bandwidth to eventually go live and not have any glitches. You see? You see? But I cleared that up. And that, that's pretty cool. That's what a producer does. I solved this problem. It's also over here. If you look, it's the same one over here. It's not the blue flame. I offered to buy that blue flame, but for some reason that guy didn't want to get back to me. It's your loss, bro. German guy in Germany. Are you freezing your ass this summer? Or winter, rather, I should say. <laughs> we don't freeze our ass in summer. I, that was, I just misspoke. I even slept well last night, and I misspeak less when I speak or when I sleep properly. I did it again. Instead of saying sleep, I said speak. Okay, but that's all right. We're not perfect. And this usually improves as I warm up. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to open this new video from Amala. And we're just going to get underway. Come bring it over here for you guys. For you guys. And I'm going to restart it and get this audio open straight away. This is to split check on date who's in the wrong. Oh, you yeah. ordered the bowl and you ordered the hash browns. And that's yes. 1875, look it. 1875 with taxes. It was 386, so I'm just breaking it down, split that up, 386, half of that is almost yeah. $2. Yeah, cheap I'm like 180 or something like that. So it will owe you $20. It doesn't even matter what I order, why I didn't Now I know someone who might be watching me going, oh, hey, oh yeah, I know Paul, he's a cheapskate, but someone tricked me. Back in the day, people, do you know why? Because I went out on a date with someone and she's like, okay, no problem. We'll split the bill. 
And that's where we were. And, and, and on subsequent occasions, I was very generous. I paid for the whole bill for this person and more. On, but I'm not going to get into all of that. But I was accused of being cheap because she had me over to her house for dinner. And I was, um, apparently I wasn't doing enough. And, you know, um, there's a whole story behind that I won't get to. And I won't be too mean. I seriously doubt she's watching this. But it would be rude if someday she happened upon it and realized, oh, my God, he's talking about me. I'm not out to hurt anyone's feelings, but I've been accused of being cheap before, and I don't like that. And ever since I was accused of that, I've gone out of my way to be extra super duper generous. Don't you diss me and say I'm cheap. That's a bunch of baloney, dude. Well, I'm saying, why would I have to pay even half of it when you're here? That's what you're here for. And this lady's pathetic too. It's like once a guy objects, you should pay for half. You should be out of the door. And you, but you were just trying to take advantage of him. You're not really interested in him. You just wanted a free meal. But I, I mean, like, it should be clear. Communicate, people. Communicate with one another if you go out on a date. Here, I asked you, did you want to go out to eat with me? I didn't yeah. say I was gonna pay. Neither yo, of these people. I think that should have been clarified at the start, yo. That's what adults do. And uh, you know what? Sometimes a woman should pay. Why not? It's the femperative world. You pay. That's what I say. And is that cheap? Oh, I don't know. But to be honest with you, if I'm generous, or no, excuse me, if I'm really interested in a woman, it's for sure I'm going to take that bill. Like if this is someone I really want to make an impression with, it's for damn sure I'm going to take that bill at this stage. But... I don't have that many dates where I'm like, ooh, I'm really into this woman. I don't have dates. <laughs> I, I say it like I have some here and there. There are none. I don't do that because this is what I'm doing. I'm spending my time on this energy. And if a woman wants to know me, um, it's going to have to be some kind of amazing thing that we happen to cross paths in life and meet. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. In my good graces after this video. I am old fashioned uh, and I do expect oh, that if I'll pay for a mala. If I'm going out with a mala, I don't care if she makes the big bucks at Prager U. I will pay for a mala. Is this? Just want to double check this. I will pay for you if you'll let me take you out. And you're a little young for me, but I still like you and I think we'd have a good conversation. And it doesn't even have to be romantic. I'll take the dinner. Let's hang. I'm gonna but date. you have a boyfriend. I know that. So forget it. I take back what I just said. Man is going to pay for the Still date. Like you, but though. also, once he stated that he was not going to pay for the date, she should have just been like, okay, here's my card, and uh, that's it for me. Like, you shouldn't yeah, come with 100% expectation have some dignity. that a man is going to pay. You guys, what do you think? Woman refuses to split check. I, I think he was, uh, I think it was embarrassing for both of them. They, they both irritated me a little bit, and we're going to move on from this now. Thank you, Amala. I like you. More from you in the future. More from PragerU in the future. I like PragerU. Thank God for PragerU. They're doing the work uh, that I think needs to be done that even I should be doing because I have certain beliefs about this, that, and the other thing. And so, yeah. Okay. Let's go to this, okay? I'm going to speed this up to two times. Here we go. Let's take a look at this dude. Hold on. We'll pause it. I've gotten eight seconds into it. But, okay, so this is the dude over a 15-year period took took a picture every single day of his life for 15 years. But as I play it, I want it to go, let's see, what's the speed playback speed possibility here? 1.5, two is the top. So that should make this about two minutes, 15 seconds. And I will try to do intriguing commentary about this the whole time, okay? And we will zoom in on this like this. Chubby guy, let's see if this guy grows up and gets a little more. Meat on his, or less meat on his bones, I should say. <laughs> oh yeah. Do we like the music fast like that? I think I'm gonna mute the music for now, or at least take it down. Okay. So we see a lot of zits coming and going. Dude's got the same big nose the whole time. This is like hypnotic, it's driving me nuts. It's flashing at me in a way like I feel like someone knew I was gonna do this, and they're trying to hypnotize me. And you see various lengths to his hair. And dude never changes his hairstyle throughout this whole thing. Come on. So we're about a fourth of the way through here. Okay, are we... You did get a haircut there. It's like you went some years... Okay, finally you cut up those silly bangs. Let's slow this down a little bit, actually. It's making me nervous. 
It's making me extremely nervous. Playback speed. 1.5, okay? Where I don't even know this dude's name. Does it show this dude's name here? Let's zoom out on this and see if it shows dude's name. Dude's name. December. You don't say your name here, dude. Peter. Oh, the song. You have the name of the song, but okay. So are you Jordan? Is this Jordan? Yeah, you are definitely looking more manly. You've gotten rid of some of that chubby on your face. That's kind of cool. Your nose has remained consistent throughout this whole thing. That nose is amazingly the same thing. But let's see as we go seven more years of when the growth spurt kicks in and the testosterone testosterone kicks in if that nose and the features like you got that young man jawline right there good man you should keep doing this and you do should do the second part 15 years after this video and we watch your hair falling out over a period of time that would have been amazing to see your hair fall out dude okay oh you shaved your head entirely different look i'm glad to see you switching it up a little bit okay cool looking guy Little kids look awkward. No change in the nose. Nice jawline, looking a little like Prince Harry, but a civilian. Not royal. Okay, we have, we're on one and a half times speed right now, and we have about uh, 45 seconds left. I'm impressed, dude. You're growing up to be a good looking young man. Shouldn't have any problem even being a carrot head, um, like getting ladies. I'm proud of you. Looking good. Well, boy, you didn't do anything. None of the work went into you for the genes. It was your mom and dad. And I, it, was it spontaneous? Are your parents together? Do you know who your father is? I'm wondering this. Okay, it's almost over. Seven seconds left. And are we going to have like a pause at the end where it's just like old him? Okay, I want to go back to the last images or two right here. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, 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 stop, stop. Okay, you look like a grown man. Good for you, buddy. I was liking that. So we're going to stop that now. And we're going to go to the next thing on tap. I have a clip from Eric and Daryl here where they started um, they started getting sort of philosophical one another. At the end of this episode they did it was an hour-long recording from about a year ago. And I want to see. It says go to about 33 minutes. Where are we here? Go to what, what, what? Okay, 33 minutes is where I want to go for this. Um. And so, starts out here, I will move you guys over so you can see this. Of course, I'm inspired by these guys because they do good work. It's also like, what's really interesting about these two, Eric and Daryl, that's Eric, that's Daryl. They have like a whole nostalgia channel that just hit 100,000 subscribers. And I think it resonates with people because they're two authentic people who really represent the era that they grew up in. They are like quintessential in the way of nostalgia. And and Eric, as the folklore of their lives go, he had a, I guess his mom might have spoiled him with computers, computers that could edit video like Commodore Amiga, is that right, you guys use those? And, and videotape, so you were able to tape yourselves. You had camcorders from those days. Most of us, those camcorders were so expensive, my parents never would have bought something like that for me at that age. And if they did, I would have been out immortalizing my life as well. That didn't start happening until it was the 70s or the 70s. I was going back in time until the 90s when I bought like a little eight millimeter camera and started doing stuff on that. It might, it's my plan to capture stuff from that and do some of that here. Not necessarily for the sake of nostalgia, but since I'm into then and now demonstrating uh, through the video that I had at those time, that time, like what a little ding dong I was, an annoying little ding dong. So I want to follow their conversation here, and I want to basically comment on what they're saying, say some stuff about them, what I have in common with them that I really liked, and also um, how I, you know my life in contrast to that, which is a lot of the same stuff. Let's go. Let's go into the um uh into the vast beyond let's so tell me daryl <laughs> the vast beyond yes. what is it it gets what interesting. is it that you really want first dick and answer broad strokes here as a human being 
living on planet Earth. I like Earth, that expression. What is it that you really want? And it doesn't have to just be one thing. It could be a couple of things, or it could just be a general statement, something. What is it that you really want in this life experience? A bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> Set your sights high. Just, just a really good bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> so in this scenario, you've just gotten what you wanted. You've, you've gotten, <laughs> you've, you've, you've gotten the the bacon Chow it. cheeseburger with whatever toppings, seasonings. The other day, I saw. On your Instagram page, one of you, whoever runs that page, put a picture of you guys editing video together. And I think it was in Eric's studio here, but I couldn't tell because it was facing the other direction. And I was wondering if where Eric was sitting, let me just go to that really quick. Why, why can't I? Why shouldn't I? I will go to Instagram and I will search. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... Where are we? Oh, that's Michael Sartain with a hot lady right there. So I will go to Eric and Daryl, okay? Okay, don't be don't be dissing. Okay, here's what I want. That's the picture right there. That's what I wanted to say. Is this the same room? Okay, so I see a lava lamp over here. I'm going to try to uh, identify the objects here in this picture. There's a lava lamp back there. So if I come back into this picture over here, do I see a lava lamp on this table over here? Whoa. Over here, do I, I don't see, I see drones. I see these flashlights. Are these flashlights in that other window over here? Let me come out of here really quick. I'm interested in this. You cannot fault me for this. Okay, so, or are we in Daryl's house? Oh, the floor. I might be able to identify something on the floor. So I see a lava lamp. I don't see, I don't see anything else on the right there that I can identify positively. What about the floor? Do we see the floor in over here? I'm a shitty detective. I can't see shit. <laughs> Mayo and mustard. What What else Pickles? is there? What else is there to life that you want? It's easier to get what you want if you specifically know what it is that you want. Throughout now let's start life, getting I just serious and real. Go about my merry way, and when I it see actually gets more serious. I like so and I get it. Daryl started out talking about the uh, shtick with the burger, and I I love the burger. But obviously it's a burger and it's not about happiness. It's a deep philosophic, philosophical meaning. Let's get there. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so grateful and happy was that this, I have. Uh, was this a early, earlier iteration of the live show or was this a recording you guys did? Was this broadcast live or did you cut this? I'm guessing you cut this later because that cheeseburger flew up in the back. But okay, I'll keep going. Thing. Those kinds of things. But had I known that I wanted it, I could have actually gotten it. I could have gotten it way quicker, and it might have even been more satisfying to get it because I knew what I wanted, and I got it. But all through my life, I've just been discovering things that I like. I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I love this thing, and I've gotten it. Cool. Well, now I've changed my mode of thinking, and now I have... Well, I, yeah, speaking of thinking... I'm digressing from what you're saying a little bit, but earlier today as I was watching this, Eric said that he he had several cars when he was younger. That This whole episode was talking about the cars they had when they were younger, and he had videotape of all of them because he, he, before anyone else in the Western world, was documenting his, documenting his stuff uh, on videotape. And so you went four years or something without a car, and I was like, oh my God, who does that? I never could have done that. I never would have done that because I associate driving too much with independence. I was just astonished when I heard you did that. And it says something really, I think, interesting about you as a person that you gave up your freaking car, dude. And you say you didn't need one. And I, the part that I liked that you said was you didn't have to pay insurance and uh, car payment and for gas and stuff like that. I'm like, OK, that makes sense. But like living within a 15 minute radius of life, like, you know, around you, that would stink. But that's going to be imposed on us pretty soon anyway. So I will continue on with this. Never mind that. I'll talk about that in another video. 15 minute cities. Oh, my God. Specific wants and, and needs. And now I, I'm 
my objective is to get those things. Hmm. Anyway, that's the preface. So is this something you ever really thought about? Don't I've buy a Tesla. You also said you wanted a Tesla. I'm just saying, don't buy a Tesla, for God's sake. These, these electric cars are a bait and switch, I swear to God. It's a mistake to buy a Tesla. And they burn like ten with ten times the intensity. If you wreck and it goes on fire, you're going to die a horrible death. Ten times worse than a death by regular petroleum fire. Trust me. Mid. We, all right. We've always been struggling to make films. Here's where and, it starts getting interesting, I think. And and personally interesting shows and filmed stuff. I don't. I don't know. I, I get so tripped up in all this because it, it bogs me down. It, it has bogged me down for many, 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 many years. I but know where you're coming from on this. What, what do I really want? Like I, so I wanna, much in I wanna my make own life. Movies and, and TV shows like on on the big scale. I wanna like in in the Hollywood arena, um, but it's always eluded me. I never I've never known how to break into I've been circling that it's like a castle, you know? It's like there's this big with a moat. castle called Hollywood, and you can't get in. Other people get in. I don't know how they get in, but I can't get in. Um, yes, you can. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to say I, I know that it's extremely hard to break into Hollywood. Um, I went there to Hollywood during the week of September 11th, 2001, when the terrorist attacks uh, came about. The World Trade Center, the Pentagon, the other plane, wherever that was, where it crashed. I'm not making light of it. Um, I was in Los Angeles during that week, and I was there to explore uh, the possibility of moving out there to pursue music or something in show business. And the simple fact of the matter is that that happened during that week and it just threw my head for a freaking loop when I was out there. I was out there and that happened. I was out there, I felt an earthquake. I was in an apartment building and it's like, oh, and I was like, what the, that, what? And uh, it's just mortifying. And then I saw two bums in the middle of a main road in Hollywood fighting in the middle of a main road in the middle of the day, fighting each other. Two guys rolling around in the middle of the road, like where traffic is, on a main major road. Freaked me out. And so, it changed my life. But what I want to say is, um, uh, one of the people I admire greatly who went out to Hollywood and made it was a comedian by the name of Jamie Kennedy. You guys probably know him. He's roughly our age. He's a little bit older than we are. Um, and if you read his autobiography, which I've read twice because I'm... I am a fan of his. I'm an admirer. He's like, ah, it's lame to call me a say you're a fan, but I am. I'm a, I'm an admirer of his work. I don't see why he has an issue with that. But um, uh, saying that you're a fan, I think he may, thinks maybe I'm putting myself beneath him, which I am not. Trust me, my ego is not putting myself beneath you, but I'm a great admirer. Anyway, one of the he had such a struggle making it. Okay, like so many people have those stories, and one of the things he did to set himself apart was. He pretended to be his own manager. He set up a phone and and it was like the number was given out for Jamie Kennedy's manager, which was I think the name of the guy he was pretending to be was Marty Powers. So when people would call that phone, he'd pick it up and he would talk in a different voice and represent himself. And somehow through doing this, it wound up being a breakthrough moment for him, some opportunity somewhere where he finally got his Screen Actors Guild card. And and it's all the crazy things you have to go out of your way. Like, I know uh, because of what I did in the past when I had some momentum and some notoriety that um, you have to, like, go nuts. Every waking moment of every day, you have to be obsessed. You have to do unorthodox things. Me and my crew at one time for my this radio show I ran in the past, we were doing crazy stuff. One time we were at a corn concert, and I used to wear this official-looking lanyard for my radio show uh, at the time, Marijuana Radio, and uh, we just walked right backstage. And we looked official, and we looked legit. And I got to meet members of the band, and we stood 
on the side of the stage watching the opening act play. You have to take wild, bold moves to make it. Do you know how I got noticed in iTunes was um, I sent a giant bouquet of flowers. I spent like $200 or $250 on roses, and I sent them to the iTunes office, and I said, this is my name. This is my podcast. I would really appreciate it if you could help me out. And they did. Like my original podcast got picked up in their directory and they started featuring it. And I the subsequent one I did, which was even bigger, this is no joke. It reached a point where it was like um it was I was in the top 15 of the comedy podcasts in the rankings. And the other people there were like Joe Rogan at the time and uh Adam Carolla and I was like, "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" And I'm not uh, resting on my loyal laurels right now. I gave that up. I like went away from that feed, and and I had a I had two in those rankings. One was a a video feed, and the other was the podcast feed. And I was getting enormous downloads every week. And you have to go out of your mind trying to meet people, knock on doors, bang on doors, do cr- just constantly. You have to get and you guys have that momentum right now. Is what I'm gonna say is. With what you guys are doing right now, you have extraordinary momentum. Not with just the YouTube subscribers, but you you make these great videos. You have definitely like a brand that I can feel. And it's like a community. And we're not done with this video yet. I'm going to be going for like (laughs) nine more minutes talking about nine more minutes on this video. And I'll be adding my two cents to it. But I really want to encourage you guys to continue doing the live show because I really think that is... uh, That's the heart and soul of what you do. It's the bread and butter because that's the community of people really feeling like they get to dwell in your presence doing what you're doing. And it it really makes me feel good what you guys do because I think you're genuine people. Uh, I will bring up some other stuff. I'm saving it right now because there's so much more of this. But let's continue this video with Eric and Daryl, shall we? You can't get in unless you know somebody who's already in. That's right. But if they're already in... That's why you got to make up... Something. Be your own manager. Make make the phone ring, and when it rings, you don't play Daryl when you pick up the phone. Hi, this is Daryl. No, you pretend to be someone else. Bill Powers. You can steal it from Jamie Kenny. No one will know. You say this is Bill Powers. I'm the agent for for Daryl Hazelrig. I believe that's how you pronounce your last name. Is that German. Anyway, let's continue. More and action. And- because you can't meet them to get in because they're inside. It's this <laughs> weird thing, but yeah, I mean, I would, I would just love to be able to like have my own show on TV and Wouldn't like we everyone all? know it. And I, and um, I can't, I don't know that I can get into what has happened, all that's happened with the lockdown and everything these years. It's totally changed my attitude about like if I were to get some kind of offer and they said that I need to, you know, do that. I can't do that. You can offer me ten million dollars. I'm not doing that. And Ice Cube turned that down too. He got a nine million dollar offer for a movie, and he already had f you money. They said you got to do that, and he's like, "Nah, I'm not doing that." And I rem- I admire the shit out of him for doing that. So I feel like every time I can't really go into this, it's nuts. But like every time I'm looking at someone in a TV show, I'm like, "This means they've done that, and they're gonna die." And I'm not healthy for thinking that, but it's like people, you keep doing that and you're going to die very soon. I'm sorry, I'm getting morbid, but honestly, I have this issue. Before, in this TV show, or in this recording you guys did here, earlier in the show when you're talking about your cars, I'm I'm going like this, honestly, I'm like, these are such nice guys, I wonder, I hope they'll be all right when the world goes to hell in a handbasket. And some of this ties into... Um, the fears that um, Eric is expressing later. But let me get back to this, okay? I'm just going on my own thing. I go on my own rant, and I'm like, and action. You know, do some films that play in theaters. And um, of course, I mean, it's strange that my goals haven't really changed since I was 12. But um, yeah. peer respect. Yes. Respect I from peers. Yes. On a certain Dude, level. You say on a certain level, but you've, even though you haven't cracked into that Hollywood big scene and whatever, you've done some things that really demonstrate your creative side 
in a in a wonderful way. The puppet movies, the things you guys both have done together. Um, and it just has that charm seeing the, you know, you're so comfortable with yourself now when you're talking, Daryl. And I'm, I'm watching these old videos, like when you're playing, doing the Dave show, you guys are so silly. And, and even though you're undeveloped talent, there was this innocence to it. And this, um, this, uh, integrity it had just being young kids, having fun, goofing around. And, and so like, you've grown so much. And uh, you keep having, you got to keep trying is all I'm saying. You can't just, because you sound a little uh, like disappointed. I haven't, like, hey, I, I I swear this is true. When I was 21, or no, when I, no, when I was 21, when I was um, like 27, I went through a horrible breakup. It like broke the living F word out of my heart. I was majorly uh, despondent over losing this girl. And I just dove into music, writing music and recording music. And my parents were like exceptionally worried about me because I was like, uh, I would say music or death. And they're like, no, 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 you gotta, you gotta. And I'm like, no, fucking music or death. And this is like, I was very uh, emphatic the way I would tell them like that. And it's like nothing else that I care about. And I, I didn't know at the time I was doing a very good job writing music, but I didn't, um, I didn't have any aspiration to like build a business, how to like approach the business. It was just like, I'm a fucking great artist and I will be discovered. And I was not discovered <laughs> until later when I started working on business and doing the radio stuff, which the music eventually led to a creative outlet because I became obsessed with Howard Stern. And then I became obsessed with the idea that I could record content and put it on the internet in the form of a, a a radio show type format. And I pursued extremely very much the idea of doing something in the vein of a Howard Stern show. And uh, what I wanted to say about it was also that, uh, oh man, it was just so much work. And I, I got married and it was all this stress and work. I had a business downtown doing it and it was, it was super hell, but it was an amazing experience that opened a lot of doors with a lot of people. And I even think, the fuck um just one sec okay here we go i had to pause because my special effects stopped and i don't know why they stopped these are supposed to play for like over two hours so i'm gonna have to do a test it'll probably stop again because i'm going to be doing this for a while so i lost my train of thought where the heck was i i was talking about some work i did um but, I, but now that I totally jacked that up, I'm just going to go back to you guys and action. They're like, oh, yeah, the, the, he does good work. And, and we want to reward him with that good work with allowing him to do more good work. Because I honestly, like if if I had of the course. opportunity, uh, I would work until the day I die because I love it. If it's, you know, that kind of work, if it's making stuff. We both share that same need. So, uh, so really, I guess mm -hmm. really in essence, what I'm saying is that's what I want to. It's like, <laughs> I want to touch more people. <laughs> Could tell from when you guys were very young, obviously. And you're on that path. That's what I see is like now you have the YouTube platform and the way you guys approach it, you seem like have, have you have steady growth. You got in the freaking music video of uh, uh, Coldplay. No, it wasn't Coldplay. Good Lord. What the hell? How could I forget the name of that band now? They're not Metallica. The band that you were in was not Metallica. That's how I'm going to say. That's how I'm going to say who it was. Nickelback. Um, I, I want to get the message to the most people that I can, right? Eric, if your goal is to touch more people, you could just become a Catholic priest. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So I have been thinking about this this topic for a while. Really the kind of things that I want, which are. I was an altar boy when I was a little boy. And I'm grabbing my skull boobs as I say that. Very broad stroke, very broad and could be um, interpreted in many ways i guess the deep down things that i'm all preoccupied because these stupid things are going to stop playing again and and for some reason it's not supposed to do that and now i'm all 
like up in arms about it. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. It should never have stopped. Two hours did not go by and these both stopped. I'm going to have to investigate that. Really want in my whole life experience is um, I want no worry, mm -hmm. uh, doubt, or fear. Those three things always hinder me in creating Same. things and me even too. everyday life and, uh, and progressing as a person. Those three things suck. Like, I don't want those worry, doubt, and fear. Uh, more specifically, I don't want to judge myself anymore. And I don't think anybody... I don't think that's ever going to end. Like, when it's built into our personalities, it's also just like the nature of life. My dad's business partner used to say, most people live in quiet desperation. Like, on the outside, we seem jovial and happy, but on the inside, we're suffering from a lot. The, so is the nature of life. I, I'm curious what despairs you guys more deeply because you get a little on the surface level here. This is the deepest you guys have ever gotten personal, I think, about stuff is in this particular video here. That's why I decided I decided to pull it out today and do commentary on it. Else does either. That's just one of those things. You can't buy it with money. Being able to not judge yourself means that you're open to all kinds of possibilities because everybody judges themselves. Oh, I'm not too good. Oh, this guy's way better than me. Or, uh, I should lose weight or I should do this or, oh, I'm, I suck at this or, oh, I'm so lazy. I should be working or you're just judging yourself. You're like, you're like another voice saying, oh, you know? So like, if I could just, we are our own worst critics and enemy how can that not be the case like when i was 12 i never thought when i was 12 that i was the type of person who could play guitar and i wish i had known then i wish i had the confidence because i was watching fucking ducktales around 14 years old instead of playing guitar i could have been playing guitar and so many more girls would have liked me damn judge myself anymore that would be an excellent trait i would like to have that uh i would also like speaking to speaking of around regret interesting looking back people. oh and you're i love that i love I've what you're saying about that that's why i put this up because you guys are interesting to me you both have interesting stuff going on and there's an authentic lifelong bond between you guys and and a lot of people feel that that's like what a what you two have between one another the history, the rich history, the continuity with one another, gr the growth creatively and the skill that you see over the years improving, that's what everybody wants. I have videos from the 90s where I'm pretending to be Zach Wilde with a guitar and I'm not wearing a t-shirt. I'm like shirtless and I'm sucking ass on guitar. But when you play those old videos and contrast them to what I can do now, it's like, oh my God, you see the growth there. But really what distinguishes you guys is your personal connection with one another. People Being love it. You. <laughs> so that's all I want. I'm not just kissing your butt either, because if I thought something were wrong, I wouldn't be cruel about it because I like you guys, but you'd notice I'm quiet. I just would be like not saying anything because when I care about people's feelings rather than um, saying something, I don't, I don't say it. And, uh, but if you had some shit in your teeth, I'd be like, hey, you have some shit in your teeth. Or if you sat in some tomato sauce and it looked like you had your period, I'd be like, hey, Daryl, what did you sit in some tomato soup? It looks like you shat some menstruate. <laughs> oh my God, why am I saying this? See, I'm I'm a basket case myself. Uh, you know, speaking of worry, being around interesting people, if menstruate offends you, I may not be in the category of interesting people. Sorry. How did I come up with the word menstruate in this whole talk you do over these few minutes? Shame on me. I just want to be around interesting people. If you're interesting, then that's your end. I agree. And I then agree. I will just hang. further investigate <laughs> and we'll have an interaction and we'll see how it goes, you know, and then I'll assess and then, you know, we'll go our separate ways. If, if you're, if, if at first you were interesting and then it, Sorry to Twindles. be weird, you know? Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, like, I take back the menstruate. You know, in general, 
it, like I love going to conventions like Dragon Con and stuff. You meet so many interesting people. Yeah. It's so it's, Did you it's know such a, when you started this uh, video intense. that you have menstruate just a little bit right here? I think I'll get that off there for you. Never mind, it was on my television. Little bit of menstruate on the television. <laughs> oh my god, shame on me. Like stimulus to my brain because like everybody's interesting and I just want I, I just want to interact with everybody. You know, it's like everywhere, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, it's so cool. Sometimes and, you just want people to notice you to feel like you're like, hey, me, validation, recognition over here, me, huh? I can't even get followers on Twitter. I used to have a Twitter f with 20,000 followers and I like dumped it and I'm like, why the fuck did I dump that Twitter? And that was 10 years ago. Could have had freaking 50,000 followers or more by now. I guess lastly, and this is like what was I thinking? the most highest scope, broad statement ever. I want what makes me feel good. I want what money can buy you. I don't want the money. You know, mm. money is cool, but money only means that you can get what makes you feel good. Um, it's only stuff, mentioned man. I've been building out this studio for a couple months now, really just like going nuts building this out because I was like, I know what I want to do finally again. And it's stuff. You can't take it with you. So right now I'm, you know, I'm doing this. It's my studio. I'm trying to create something that's an extension of me, but someday I will die and there will be an estate sale and people will be buying all of my shit. This roadcaster, the freaking ATEM I have downstairs, monitors, computers, all these TVs. People will be like, buying it it'll disperse my cd collection um my drums downstairs more recording equipment microphones all this shit winds up being shit and and i bought my truck um i have a toyota truck because back to the future uh and i've always loved that ever since i was young but i i had this um thing i said to myself when I bought it and it was delivered to me on Halloween of 2030, no, 2012 Halloween was when it was delivered. Um, I was like, this will not make me happy. This doesn't matter. It's just a truck. It doesn't fucking matter at all. And it's the honest to God truth is I've learned that um, whatever I acquire materially, like I have all this cool shit here. It's not like it's the bedrock of life of what matters. I'm more worried about my parents. I'd give all this stuff up to make my parents 20 years younger and healthier again, just so they could stick around. I'd give it all up permanently. I wouldn't want to do this. I'd like them to be around me. So like, it's just stuff, dude. But I do like to buy gear. I'm a gear queer from West Philadelphia. That part's bullshit. I'm from Denver, Colorado to Kim, my wife, and she was like, but aren't I on your list? And I'm like, but you are oh, man. one that makes me feel good. So it is very broad aspect, but generally I, I roam the earth and I just want what makes me feel good. Like, I mean, doesn't everybody? <laughs> so yeah, that's my list. Those are my wants. And I'm going to get them too. All right, broad strokes like good. that. Um, then so I you would guys say, are deep. That was totally real. I, and if that wasn't real, I'd be able to feel that. I watch all kinds of people on YouTube, and I'm sure some people watch me and think I'm not being real. But um, this is just an outlet for me where I deliberately act sensational and ridiculous, and I, I don't feel bad about being silly on here. I'm I'm trying to get noticed. I'm trying to build value, not in just a monetary sense, but creatively. You know, someone will see like, oh, look what that guy's doing. That's kind of cool. Let's ask him to come pe be a part of what we're doing. Or maybe I can contribute to what they're doing on some level. And I appreciate that stuff. So now is where Daryl gets really deep. And I want to hear what he has to say. Do with less depression. Mm. I really started suffering from depression in my early 20s. Depression is such a clinical word. I prefer to say melancholy because that's, you know, that's the normal ups and downs of life. When you say depression, it's like this clinical thing and you got to get medication for it and go see a doctor. But 
it's the normal thing in life. And I'm wondering, when you're talking about depression here, you're not being super specific like, this is what made me sad. When I was in my early 20s, I was sad because I was in love with a particular girl and it was unrequited. And that drove me insane. And it took me a really long time. You know what happened? I got over that girl because I started playing guitar. And when I started getting good at it, it was like my my confidence just blossomed as a young man. I was like, I found what I'm supposed to be doing at this time. And that's really not exaggeration. But so you are talking about depression. I'm like, was there anything specific or was this just like boiled into your personality and there was nothing specific like unrequited love for a girl? And I look back on that and I think it's laughable. Unrequited love for a girl. What was bugging you at that age? And these are the questions I would love to have answered. And someday I'm going to ask you to come on here and talk to me. And I'm going to probe you. <laughs> I'm going to probe you in your menstruate. And we're going to get all deep in that gnarly. No, seriously. I'm going to like just ask you these questions because I am interested on a human level. I just remember like the day it happened. Um, but it's... It's been something that's really affected me ever since then. Um, and mainly the, the biggest problem with depression, from especially the way it affects me mainly is it saps my ability to do anything. I can't think. Sounds normal. I don't feel sad. I'm not like crying, you know, I, I just, I can't function. I can't motivate myself to do anything i can't think straight enough to think of what i might want to do and the best way i've found to deal with it is to just kind of hunker down and let it pass but then yeah. the problem is that time passes and i'm just not doing it. wasting time which then makes me feel a little worse because then i feel like i'm just being lazy and i don't do anything seize the day i could do without that I wish I could be more open with people. I tend to be a very closed person. Uh, this surprises a lot of people because they think, oh, mm -hmm. you're like Mr. Jovial, Mr. like in your face, yes. crazy guy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. I relate because I I get all crazy on here and people have told me, when they meet me in person, they're kind of like, whoa, you're not like that nutty guy at all. I turn it way down. I turn the volume way down on what I'm doing. And otherwise I would drive people crazy. But I've told people before, I'm the type of person where if you want to get my attention, you have to sometimes knock more than once and knock loudly because I'm just uh, aloof. I, I keep a distance. Even with you guys, when I first called into your show, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this because I'm like, um, I always foresee the future as you, you befriend people and then eventually you butt heads or something. And then it's like, oh, it was so nice when we were in the honeymoon phase of knowing one another. And uh, but then like it gets all serious. And I look at romantic relationships that way as well. It's just like, oh, this again, going through all this same Okay, in the beginning, but um, more from Daryl. This, just me out in the world, I'm not that. I'm very closed off. I'm very, and and it's not, um, some people have misinterpreted it as me being um, not friendly. Yeah. Or an asshole. <laughs> or <laughs> lot, lots of different things. Uh, I, I seriously doubt that you've had the army of people thinking you're an asshole uh that you think because i just think uh you guys have a regular normalcy about you that is what's becoming about you um not me though and that larry he's an interesting character as well he's how i got to know you guys was the was the heavy metal kid walks to the store that was the first introduction i had to you guys when i watched that video I looked where that video was posted. It was posted on your channel. And then I clicked through and I started looking at what you guys were doing. And then I started watching the live shows and I watched all these aging rock stars and all this stuff. We have the music in common, the period we grew up in. And I didn't, I didn't foresee that so many people were going to have such a, 
a rich nostalgia for the 80s of growing up because usually it's like every decade gets better it's distinguished from the one before and woohoo this is cool even my cousin said to me once uh when we were young like yes we fucking grew up in this era we're so blessed to grow up in this era because we had we were talking about vcrs was our big uh uh thrill like we can record tv shows <laughs> we had no idea about dvrs coming down the road computers the internet we didn't have any of that but we were already mystified by what our, by what our era and the modern uh things the modern toys would bring and and sometimes i think we've gone too far and some of these things alienate us from one other one another and distance us from one another that's what I do here. I comment on what others are saying. I try to add depth. That's what I'm doing. And I, I got inspired by you guys this year. You're part of what made me start doing what I'm doing. So I'm giving you some of that credit. Um, I'm not trying to slough off of you. I'm not trying to take your followers, your listeners, whatever. It's not about that at all. I'm just offering my gratitude because I started doing something again creatively that I haven't done for a long time and I, I've really missed it. And I'm approaching it a little more maturely now, even though, um, even though you have a little bit of menstruate on your face. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, it's not see, bad. that's just me. I can't, I can't, uh, you know, uh, let's see what Daryl has to say. No, it's none of those really. It's just that I, I tend to think that, oh, everybody's out there in their life. They're doing their own thing. I shouldn't interfere. I should just do my thing. Um, but I think most people don't go through life being like, I hope everyone leaves me alone. Um, it depends. Yeah. It depends. So I've always tried to find a mix between solitude and social life, a balance between things. But the older I've gotten, the more I've like gone into this solitary direction. And, and so I have some good relatives we hang out once in a while but not nearly as enough enough as i think we should to have uh healthy social lives i don't know what they're like but i'm i'm way too solitary in my life i need to be out there doing more stuff and part of why i'm doing this now is an effort to get out there meet people when i started podcasting a long time ago it started connecting me with people so i'm just kind of trying the same methodology Upgraded for 2023 with the cameras and doing more of a TV format instead of just a recorded audio format. But let's continue with Mr. and Mrs. Um, well, I don't know who the Mrs. is. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Fullerton and Hazelrig. Just you're both Mr. Go through life thinking, oh, everybody just wants to be left alone. The opposite side of being depressed sometimes. is sometimes you're like, wow manic right yes and uh oh god and i always i i enjoy that and it's less it yeah sometimes happens less and less the older i get but um yeah but i i have those moments where i've been able to break out and be and i and i don't need to be that extreme but i just wish i could be just a little more open with the world fortunately it happened on that day that we were walking through the old neighborhood and we came upon uh the people who lived in my old house and i I happen to be in the moment, and so <laughs> we. Yeah. I, I was able to talk to them and make them feel comfortable enough to let us into their house. Here's a little confession. Um, you're about to suck on that, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. Um, so like, it was some months ago now when Eric added me as a friend on Facebook, and I was like, Oh my God, no! And don't take offense to that, because I'll explain to you why I did that. This is uh, the profile where I like take part in your group on Facebook is my second Facebook profile. The other one, the first one with a rich history is deactivated. All the people I knew in my life, relatives, lots of friends, people I went to high school with, friends in Italy, I deactivated that. It's, it's there I can log back in on occasion and see it, but, um, and so I went to this other Facebook profile and I didn't even have my real name at first. I was going by Luco. <laughs> and, um, and so I just added a bunch of groups 
and things of this nature that I was interested in, like Motley Crue is an example, metal pages. I follow all kinds of pages for gear that I have because I'm always trying to learn more about this stuff. And so when Eric followed me, I was like, oh my God, if I don't accept it, he's going to be like, what? Like, what? And so I wanted to be nice and accept it. And so I'm like, ah. And so I have four total friends right now. Another one of those four is Mandy. And she added me. And I was like, oh my God, she added me too. <laughs> and nothing's wrong with her. She's an extremely sweet person. But it was like, um, it was a whole mind bender. Here's my problem with Facebook is if I go comment on anything anywhere, Facebook's going to be like, Hey, Eric, Paul made this comment over here. Look what he said. Look at the stupid thing he said. And I don't like that gossipy aspect of Facebook. It's like they talk about privacy and I want to have a feature that is like turn on the feature that doesn't fucking tell other people what you said over here commenting. You don't go out of your way to tell them. It feels gossipy to me. And I say a lot of stupid things, so I'm self-conscious. And I'm like, oh my God, if I... If I uh, add Eric, he's going to see the stupid things I say, and then he's going to be like, whoa, this guy's crazy. And I'm the guy saying what I'm saying now when I've been joking about you having menstruate on your face tonight. That's me, yo. Uh, <laughs> um, for real, though, I was just... And so sometimes I'm like, should I start adding people on Facebook again? I don't know. Because I'm trying to build this thing here, but I'm like, I don't want any, any new friends. This is enough. I lead my solitary life and this is enough. Right. That's yeah. that's an example of like yeah, I wish I would just wish I could be like that all the time. You know? But yeah. mo most of the time I'm not like that. Most of the time I'm just kind of like mm. I'm going to wrap this up cuz they're they're at the end of the uh the deep part and so um really liked all this stuff before about all these cars they went through on here today. I like these guys. Check out Eric and Daryl. I'll put a link to this video so you can check them out if you watch this. But they just have good vibes. I'll show you something here, too. Like, it happens to the best of us, Eric. I see your lack of hair here. And you have more than I do. So rejoice in that. Seriously. Apparently, if we had done the right things from very early on, there was something we could have done. Not to lose our hair, but I, I didn't do that. I just kept going down the path of losing my hair. Took Propecia for a year, started growing back, lost the ability to have a boner. In the meanwhile, I didn't have any interest in sex. It was like flatline. Woman in a bikini and was flatlined. And I was like, I don't react to that the way I used to. And there used to be these huge surges of, of what do you call it? Stress. Mad stress. Like anxiety goes like, ooh, ooh. It's what it was like. I'm just telling you. So if you like anything I'm doing here, I appreciate it. Um, that goes out to everybody. If you like it, I appreciate you subscribing. I appreciate you sharing it, following me on social media, interacting with me, engaging with me. Become part of a community here. Eventually, I'm going to start streaming after I have the workflow figured out. And because uh, I kind of want to have some interaction going during the show. It's what I used to do in the past when we would record a live show. We'd have s streaming people listening and stuff way back in the day when it was just audio. We had a webcam, but it was really low res at the time. Nothing special. So if you dig what I'm doing, I appreciate um, your commenting, liking this, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, those of you out there in a position to do anything... Share it. Oh, is that right? What do you have to say over there, Jules? You like what I'm doing as well, right? I, I appreciate you, Jules. I appreciate you more than Copy does. Do you know that? I think you deserve a better man owl than Copy, Jules. He's like giving me that stare. You're right. You're right. I was just joking, dude. Take it easy. All right, everybody. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna figure out why these things stopped playing. They're not supposed to stop playing. It was supposed to be more reliable than YouTube. YouTube never even gave out on me once when I was doing this. And the first time I go out to do a recording with this new USB play a video modality, it screws me over. Whatever. All right. Thank you for doing this, everybody. 
How am I, how do I want to wrap this up? I don't know. I hope you're buying stored food because I think the world is going to hell. Got to stop burning down these food processing plants. Peace to you all, everyone. I sincerely mean that. <laughs>